Hi, this is uh, Kevin. Welcome to my supplementary lecture on understanding the participation grading scheme and its uh, potential impact on your final grade. I used to include this uh, discussion in my lecture where I introduced the course and I reviewed the syllabus, but as the scheme has gotten a little bit more complex, um, I don't really want to take up the time in that lecture, and yet it's important that you understand this and you have a place to go to uh, play some content um, when you want to remind yourself about how this is uh, going to work. So I'm recording this uh, for the spring of 2024, where I've made some revisions in the scheme, and I've introduced these across all of my uh, courses, okay? And so uh, when you read the syllabus for your course, um, it's going to have some content that looks like this uh, document that I'm going to be reviewing here, okay? Um, uh, it's going to be in the part of the syllabus that deals with uh, grading and it's going to be a part of a numbered list and it's not going to be number one, <laughs> okay? I've extracted it from a uh, syllabus, so here it's uh, number one, but mm, in your syllabus it could be uh, number 10 or uh, number 4 or number 14, okay? Um, and the tables are going to be the same, okay, uh, although there's a table here in which we, uh, we describe the activities for which you earn participation points, and those activities are slightly different for online courses than they are for uh, in-person face-to-face uh, -face, uh, courses and I'll uh, describe that in a couple of minutes All right so the basic scheme is that uh, while you're participating in class for things that you do while you're in class you uh, potentially earn participation uh, points and I record them in real time okay in some of the online uh, courses, you can earn things that I'm able to record uh, programmatically. But uh, generally, I, um, I have a notebook of uh, some kind, and I just uh, jot down uh, points earned as the course uh, goes on. And I add them up at the end of the semester, and you have a certain number of uh, participation points. Okay, and on the basis of how many you earned, um, um, we calculate a uh, grade for participation out of a hundred points. Okay, so um, there's a, a, a distinction uh, between the participation points that you earn, which is a raw score, right? It just has to do with uh, the number that of things that you did and that uh, I gave you credit for. And then the the points that make up your uh, participation grade, which uh, turns out to be a score out of 100. Okay, so uh, it could be 100 points out of 100. It could not be 90 points out of 100. It could be 50 points out of 100. Okay, so the participation points and the participation grades are two different things. Okay, so what activities can you earn participation points for? Well, again, activities that happen in class. So during the first uh, class, I always ask students to introduce themselves by speaking during uh, class and, and People go one after the other. I introduce myself, and if if our TA is there, they introduce uh, themselves, and then you introduce yourselves, and you get a lot of points for this. You get uh, ten points. Um, 
in order to do that, you have to be at the first class, okay? Uh, we have a lot of trouble in our uh, uh, programs that uh, people don't enroll in the classes until after the first uh, class. So if, you, if you're one of those people, well, then it's a lost opportunity, okay? And if you're a person who mm, can't get to the first class because even though you're enrolled, uh, you haven't uh, gotten to campus, uh, well, uh, you've lost an opportunity there as well. Uh, speaking contributions during class, uh, whenever anybody asks a question or makes a comment, I try to write that down and that earns you about two points. For the online courses, that's why I put this in the highlighter, uh, if you type something into chat and make a chat uh, contribution, you earn one point. And why are they less than speaking uh, contributions? Well, I think that speaking uh, contributions make for a richer experience in class. Um, there, uh, for everybody who uh, comes to class and actively participates in a group breakout session during the class. We typically have them every class, except perhaps the first one. Um, uh, for being a part of the breakout and participating in it actively, you earn five points. Um, for speaking for your group during the debrief of the breakout session, you earn uh, two points. And sometimes that'll be one person who speaks for the group, or maybe a couple of people will, well, you know, whatever. Uh, it depends on what we have the time for and how much inclination you have to speak for your group. Okay? Um, so let's think about how many points you could earn, right? Um, there probably are going to be... Uh, 14 class uh, sessions, uh, something like that, okay? And uh, if you came to the first one and you introduced yourself, you'd get 10. And then if you came to the other 13 and you participated in the group breakout uh, session, you'd earn another 65, five times uh, 13 being 65. Uh, so even if you didn't speak at all, okay, uh, um, uh, apart from introducing yourself, you'd earn uh, 75 participation uh, points, okay? But if you don't come to class, um, or you don't, uh, or you uh, come to class and the breakout session's already over, so you, you're not part of that, well, then you're not going to earn the points, right? Okay. Um, so that's uh, what you can earn. So uh, you, could easily, uh, you could easily earn uh, 100 uh, participation uh, points if you were uh, very active. And if you don't come to class and or you don't uh, get involved in the breakout uh, groups, uh, you could you could earn uh, zero participation points. OK. So the second part is uh, what scheme your participation is going to be graded upon. And um, we've got separate formulas based upon how many points you earned. Okay, so if you earn 51 points or greater, well, you get the percentile-based scheme. And if you earned 50 points or lower, you get the low participation scheme. Okay, I'm hoping that everybody comes enough and participates enough that everybody will be in the percentile-based scheme. Unfortunately, history tells me that that's not going to be true, okay? But let's say it is true. I'd like it to be true, and I think that you would too. Um, so as long as you earn 51 or more, 
uh, participation points, you're going to have your participation graded on the percentile-based scheme. Well, the percentile-based scheme is based on um, a program, uh, uh, a formula that I've implemented in a program that has these breakpoints. Okay, if you uh, if so what I do is I go and I figure out how many uh, participation uh, points everybody has and I sort them in high to low order, okay? And then I, I figure what uh, percentile they're in. And there are typically uh, two ways uh, to calculate percentiles. You can uh, calculate uh, the percentage of uh, people who are below you. Um, or you can uh, calculate the percentage of people who are at your level or below you, and that it's the latter that I do. And when you calculate a percentile that way, it's possible to be in the 100th percentile, okay? So 100% uh, of the people are at your level or below, okay? And if you're uh, one of the people who are at the very top participation point score, uh, well then your percentile will be 100 and your participate grade, participation grade will be 100, okay? If you're in the 75th percentile, that means that 25% uh, of the people are above you, well then you've got a 95. If you're in the 50th percentile, that means that half of the people in the class had more uh, had uh, uh, more participation points than you, then you'll get a 90. If you're in the 25th percentile, that means that three-fourths of the people in the class um, had more participation uh, points than you, then you'll get an 80 for your participation uh, grade. If you're in the zeroth percentile, which I think is impossible to do, okay, but this is the floor of the, the percentile based uh, participation grade because it always includes you, so you're at least going to be in, in the one-th percentile, but if you could be in the zeroth, you'd get a 75. Well, what if you're in between these percentiles? Well, the program just extrapolates in between these uh, points. So if you're between the 100th and the 75th, then you get a proportionate grade in between 100 and 95. And that's probably going to turn out to be fractional, and then we're going to round it. Uh, what kind of rounding are we going to use? Well, we're going to use the kind of rounding that's done in Python because the program that calculates all these is written in uh, Python. Um, and I think that Python rounding uh, by default is round half even. Okay, so that's how that's going to be done. Okay, so if you scored uh, 51 participation points or greater, which I'm hoping, again, everybody's going to do. Um, most people are going to get a fairly favorable participation uh, grade. Okay? Now, what if things go wrong and you're part of a group of people who are in this low uh, participation scheme because you've scored 50 or fewer participation uh, points. Well, this is how this is going to work. Uh, the so the conversion, um, uh, if you've got 50 participation points, you're going to get a, participa a participation grade of 50. That's pretty steep. Okay, if you're down at 35, you'll get participation grade of 35, 25, 25. Anybody who's got fewer than 24 participation points is going to get zero. That means that they came to fewer than uh, five classes in which they participated in a breakout group. 
guess if you came to you five classes and you participated in the breakout uh, group, you'd have 25 uh, points. Okay, so it's very hard to get down this low. Um, have people done it? They've done it. Okay. All right, so th these are the grades and you can see the grades for the people who uh, are uh, being graded on the percentile base scheme are between 75 and 100 and the grades for the people who are being graded on this low participation scheme are between 50 and zero. All right, now what kind of impact is this participation grade going to have on your final grade? All right, what that's going to do uh, depend on how much of your final grade is made up by your participation uh, grade. And in, uh, in the spring semester uh, 2024, which is what I'm recording this for, um, I've got uh, one course where uh, participation makes up 10% of the grade and uh, two courses where it makes up 15%. Uh, and uh, how do I choose 10% uh, and 15%? Uh, percent? Well, the course in which it's 10% uh, is one in which uh, I traditionally get high participation. And uh, the one in which it's 15% is uh, a course in which I've uh, traditionally gotten low participation. And um, uh, my judgment is that the, the impact has to be higher in order to get participation up. Okay. So, these are, are the grades uh, that I showed you on the other sheet, okay? These are kind of the breakpoint uh, grades, right? So, if you're on the percentile-based scheme, if you're at these breakpoints, well, then you get these uh, grades, okay? And if you're in between, you get in between uh, grades, and then they're rounded. And these are the breakpoint uh, grades for the low participation scheme. Okay, that's how I came up with them. So, what happens when you translate these over into impact on final grade? Well, uh, of course, so if you got a participation grade of 100, if uh, the participation grade makes up 10% uh, of your final grade, well, that has a 10 point impact. Uh, on your final grade. That, that's a whole letter grade. That's the difference between an A and a B. Okay. If uh, you're in a course where the final grade uh, makes, uh, I'm sorry, the participation grade makes up 15% uh, of the final grade, well then uh, at 100% you'd earn 15% uh, it would have a 15 point impact on your uh, final grade. That's a letter grade and a half, right? So uh, that's like the difference between an A and a B minus, okay? So these are big, right? Now, um, uh, 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 of course, the, the differences in participation grade are uh, somewhat mitigated by the fact that they're, they're not happening at a full 100% when calculated into your final grade. So for instance, uh, uh, the difference between uh, getting 100 as your participation uh, grade and getting a 90 as your participation uh, grade, well, in a 10% participation uh, course, well, that's just one point in your final grade, okay? Um, it could be the difference between an A and an A plus, though, right? In a 15% uh, uh, um, uh, grade uh, contribution uh, course, it's the difference between 15 points and 13.5, um, and that's going to be a point and a half, right? And that could, again, that could easily be the difference between an A and an A plus, or a B and a B plus, or a C and a C plus, right? 
Um, when you get down to 75, uh, as the participation grade, well, uh, it has seven and a half. It, it comes over uh, at 10% at 7.5 uh, points. So that's a two and a half uh, point impact. Uh, and of course, um, in uh, the 15% uh, course, uh, the difference is the difference between 11.25 and 15, which is, uh, I think, 3.75 uh, points. Okay, but where the impact difference gets really big is when you drop into the low participation scheme, right? So, if in fact you you only earn 50 points, well, it has a uh, uh, it's the difference between at 100 getting 10 points and at 50 getting five points. Again, okay? so that's again um, half of a letter grade. Okay, and uh, it. 15 uh, percent it has a 7.5 um, it's the difference between 15 and 7.5 it's a 7 point the uh, 0.5 percent impact and again that's um, three quarters of a letter grade so that's the difference between um, again I think an A and a B minus Okay, so you definitely don't want to get down here. I mean, if in fact you've got fewer than uh, 25 participation points and you're in a course in which the participation uh, counts for 15%, uh, percent, you can easily lose uh, 15 points, right? Uh, so where do we expect uh, people to be? Well, I sort of expect uh, people to be uh, in this 90 range. I mean, this is the 50th percentile, right? Again, go back here. Okay, so what's going to happen to the average uh, person? Well, the average person is going to be in the uh, percentile based scheme and they're going to be at 50 which means they're going to get a 90 and so when you come over here uh, 90 uh, you're getting 9 of the 10 points and uh, if, if it's a 15 percent uh, of course you're getting 13.5 of the 15 okay and and that's going to uh, for most people, that's going to uh, uh, be very favorable for their overall final grade. Okay, I've, I've had a lot of uh, difficulty over the years uh, having people see the uh, the unfortunate problem of not attending class and or attending it and not uh, participating. And so I've resorted to one, this uh, grading scheme, but uh, two, this uh, video where I'm trying to make um, more clear uh, the impacts, you know, the virtues of uh, coming to class and uh, participating, which is obvious to a lot of people. Um, and the detriment of not coming to class and or not participating, um, which uh, seems to be, um, you know, the problems with that seem to elude some people. And um, I just want to make sure that everybody has a fair chance to understand the scheme up front. Um, I truly believe that coming to class and participating uh, leads to a great experience for all of us and I'm looking forward to having you all there and I'm looking forward to uh, oh, people getting a lot of uh, very favorable participation uh, grades and us going away from the semester having had a good experience that we really enjoyed okay and I'm hoping that having taken a little more time 
uh, to make this video and explain uh, the scheme and its impacts uh, will make that happen. So I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.